So you may have heard Ashes of Creation, this massive upcoming MMORPG that most of us have been waiting for for years now, will have 64 different class types to choose from. This works by when you first create your character, you can choose from one of eight primary archetypes. The Fighter, the Tank, Cleric, Bard, Rogue, Ranger, Mage, or Summoner. Each of these archetypes will fill a role in the holy trinity of tank melee and heals, plus support from the Bard. But once you hit level 25, you can then go and choose a secondary archetype. This secondary archetype chosen from those main eight will allow you to alter the abilities of your primary with what are called augments, creating a potential combination of 64 different classes a player can take on. The secondary archetype isn't a permanent choice either and can be reselected, really giving you eight different options for classes per primary archetype. This is something that on paper sounds amazing and while even in game could be a lot of fun. It does have me questioning though if this system is actually worth the hassle. Classes in Ashes of Creation are not going to be balanced on a 1v1 level. They're going with a rock paper scissors method where your rogue may beat a mage and that mage can burn a fighter down pretty quickly but that fighter could take down the rogue with ease. Each class will be strong against some, weak against some, and this is due to intrepid wanting to balance classes on a group level. So if you go up against another party of 8, it should feel like it's an even fight. This for one makes combat a bit more interesting, suggesting you go out with friends to PvP and not go in solo into certain situations, but also having you stop and think, oh, should I actually attack that guy doing this thing, or should I just go around because, well, I probably can't take him in a fight. But also, the idea of balancing what Intrepid's calling these 64 classes with one another just seems like it would be an absolute nightmare. Games with 6 to 10 classes can't get balancing right and are constantly making changes. When was the last time you saw a content pattern? for an MMORPG not nerf or buff at least one class. It's just constantly happening and doing this with 64 would be insane. Your second archetype you choose does not add any new abilities to the class kit you're rocking. You still have the same set you did before selecting your secondary. What it does is unlock a secondary talent tree that goes through and allows you to augment the abilities of that first tree. These augments will have a range of different options depending on the archetypes you have selected. Mages will have teleportation and elemental schools of augmentation and may interact differently depending on what your primary is. You may have a leap ability that suddenly has a teleport to it. You could change certain abilities to utilize frost or fire elements, which could potentially add different debuffs to your enemy. You could spec as a cleric with your secondary ability and grant some of your main kit the potential to have a lifesteal type effect when you nail down a cast. But for the most part, they all seem like minor changes to your primary abilities that may change up the look of the visuals a bit or some minor gameplay mechanics but overall they aren't really changing that much. So what exactly is the point to this system? You as a player could choose to be a mage with some healing abilities but you're never going to out heal that primary cleric. Your secondary archetype seems to be something that will be more situation based. Like you might be going into a large pvp fight and want those extra heals. You could be taking on a fire based boss and want to counter it with a little more of water abilities. It really though is going to depend on how easy or difficult it is to swap your secondary archetypes to decide whether or not they are even worth the change for these different situations you jump into. If you can just head off to the nearest node, drop some gold and respec, that's fine. But if a players have to go through and complete a quest line that takes an hour of their time, well then I feel the augment system will be one that becomes pretty irrelevant over time. Because suddenly it's not even convenient in a situational basis. It's more of a hassle to go out and change. So why bother swapping it at all? Currently though, it is a quest line that is required to change our secondary Secondary. How long this quest actually takes so and what it entails are completely unknown and something we'll probably have to wait until we start seeing the full class kits and augmentations pop into Alpha 2. As more and more people discover what their class meta is, they really won't care about changing their secondary archetype as much because, well, in these types of games, people are going to figure out to the T what they can do to perform the best possible way in a raid. And if the game doesn't force you in a way to make every bit of extra arcane damage matter over the fire elements you were previously specced into, it's really not gonna matter. I imagine there will be very few situations, if any, where you find yourself as a tank mixed with a fighter and start pulling more DPS than that base fighter. Being a ranger with heals isn't going to give you the up on a cleric. It's just not a feasible option and not one that you'd want to fill that primary healer spot with, as you could be taking a potentially 
potentially weaker class over one that's job is meant to do the healing or the DPS or the tanking. When you hear 64 classes, your mind instantly goes to your favorite MMO, thinking to yourself, oh, we're gonna have 64 unique classes that will all fit in these various roles, all with their own unique ability kits, skill trees, and all that good stuff. Well, that is not the case with this system. Your primary archetype will set the path for you. Augments don't just come from your primary archetype either. You can unlock augments through social organizations with nodes, you can unlock them through various religions, or even have them unlocked depending on the race you've selected. Ashes of Creation is a game about player choice, and man, there is going to be a lot of choices to make. Between your skill tree, secondary archetype augments, weapon skill trees for each weapon you have equipped, guild trees, all of the other augmentations that tie into your classes from the various other systems in the game, it's going to be a lot. But in order for so much choice to be worth the development, every single choice needs to be difficult. You really need to want to weigh your options to decide, do I really want to take this one over this one? Is it actually going to be worth it in the end? Because if it's an easy choice to make, then it will invalidate every other option that seems inferior. These decisions you make will obviously change from time to time depending on your situation, but they still need to be challenging, which means they need to be balanced. Intrepid is taking the hard road ahead and giving players the amount of choice they intend, when this effort could have instead be placed into other aspects of development that may need the support. They're going out of their way and hopefully balancing all these extra augments for your class while leaving your primary base archetypes unbalanced on a 1v1 level. Is this going to be the right choice for them? Well, only time will tell as players can finally get their hands on the augment system. At the end of the day though, people jumping into Ashes of Creation need to forget your current meaning of class. Because your class in the case of Ashes of Creation is your primary archetype, and what Intrepid is using for the word class is really the culmination of all of your choices into this final form that is based off that primary archetype. Your tank healer won't stand apart from a tank mage. Not to the level that you would expect when you think of what makes a class, but it should create some very fun and very exciting situations in the future for players who fully utilize the customization of what this system has to offer.